So we're ready whenever you are to play in. Okay. Okay. Hello, um, my name's Helen. I've been a member of Log Main Church for about seven years now, and I've been asked to share some thoughts on Anna. Anna comes into the account of the birth of Jesus about um, eight days after he was born when Jesus was taken to the temple to be dedicated, which would have included circumcision. And she turns up just at the moment that this is happening. We're not told an awful lot about Hannah. There are just three verses which give us um, a little bit of description of her. And I will read those verses um, just to bring you into the story. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was very old and had lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage and then as a widow to the age of 84. She did not leave the temp area of the temple but was serving and worshipping night and day with fastings and prayers. She too came up at that very moment and began praising and giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to all who were looking for the redemption and deliverance of Jerusalem. Now, if you're like me, you have some questions at this point, very human ones like, did she have any children in those first seven years of her marriage? Why didn't she get married again? Did she really live in a room in the temple or was she just there daily worshipping? But for the importance of this story, those facts don't have any relevance whatsoever. The things that are important in this story is the fact, first of all, that she was a prophetess and prophets had several roles. They sometimes had visions of future events. They um, sometimes had dreams and visions. They were used to warn people of things that were happening or going to happen um, or things that people shouldn't do because they would lead them into different uh, places. They were consulted quite regularly about quite ordinary things. Um, those of you who know the story of, the, of King Saul in the Old Testament, before he was king he went out looking for his father's donkeys and he found the prophet to help him find the donkeys so they were used in so many different ways and in this case um, uh, Anna was probably consulted on a regular basis because she would have been present in the temple and it's quite likely that people would have come in and asked her counsel asked her to speak to God about their situations so she had quite an important role I would think um, in that community and on this occasion, when Jesus was brought into the temple, the most significant thing about her, apart from her being a prophetess, is that she spent her time, instead of marrying again, as would have been the custom of the time, for whatever reason, she did not fit in with that social custom. She devoted herself to prayer, worshipping, fasting in the temple. She devoted her time to growing close to the Lord and therefore she was in the right place at the right time to encounter Jesus face to face as a newborn child. She was there at the right time to hear the prophecy of Simeon over this child and because she was a prophetess she would have known the, the prophecies about the coming Messiah. And in her long years, she would have been looking for the Messiah to come into the world. And interestingly enough, I think because she lived close enough to God in her daily life, she had her expectations open. When we read about the disciples in their relationship with Jesus, when he was in his, um, when they were following him and he was a grown up man, their expectations of the Messiah were mostly that he would come and deliver them from the Romans and from Roman domination. They had not got their expectations in the right place. But Anna had. 
she was able to be open to recognising this small infant with poor parents as the Messiah. And then she didn't keep it to herself. This was this lovely thing that once she had encountered Jesus, she had to go out and tell people who were also looking for the Messiah, who were looking for hope in this dark Roman world that they lived in. She just went out and shared the news that the Messiah had arrived. And oh, that we were like Anna. Most of us are not called to spend our time in church on our knees, but in our daily lives, we are called as God's people to stay close to him. We need to be accessing his word, however we do that, whether it's with a Bible we read or um, his word we listen to, or that we're tuned in to those who share their word with us daily. We need to be in the place because we have to get our expectations right. One of the lovely things that I, I love about this short story is that the first two people of the organised religion of the day who received the or had the encounter with Jesus, the Messiah, were an old man and an old woman. I just love that, partly because I'm old myself, but also with God, there is no sexism and there is no ageism. And this is just such a beautiful story that certainly comforts my heart at this end of life. But what we have to be prepared to do is we know those of us who have taken Jesus into our lives, we know he's come the first time and we need to be busy in our days of bringing this hope and light. He is the only hope of taking us out of darkness into light. He's not come just to lift COVID-19 off us. He's come to transform our lives, to take us from the dark places in our lives into the light places. And also those of us who love Jesus are praying and expecting his return. And we need to be close enough to him to be open to him. However, whatever form that takes, we need to be ready. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for sending your son into the world. We thank you for the light that he has brought into our lives. And we pray, Lord, that you'll help us to share the hope, the light, the expectancy of his return. And thank you, too, that he is present in our lives already, shaping and forming us. And we pray, Lord, that we might be ready to share this good news, this hope of light and life in our dark times with others who are without hope. Help us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.